Is your ex still using your Netflix? That's what one woman found out after she downloaded Truebill, which finds and cancels subscriptions with just a tap. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or just simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And Truebill Concierge is there when you need them the most. They can even help you cancel your unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Guys, Truebill has been my lifesaver. They actually saved me $217. And so you should definitely go and check them out. They have over 2 million users and have helped saved people over a hundred million dollars. Yes, I said a hundred million. You definitely don't want to miss out on this one. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash killer. Go right now, truebill.com slash killer, and it could save you thousands a year. That's truebill.com slash killer. Now, if you're looking for ways to skip the trips to the post office and dodge all that hectic holiday shopping traffic, why not save time and money with stamps.com? Stamps.com lets you compare rates, print labels, and access exclusive discounts on UPS and USPS services all year long. It just makes sense, especially if your business sends more mail and packages during the holidays. I know I've talked to you guys about this before, but I recently just moved and I am constantly sending out packages and receiving packages and having to return things. So I am constantly having to deal with shipping and printing labels and all of that. And stamps.com makes the process so seamless and so much less stressful. So whether you're selling online or running an office or side hustle, Stamps.com can save you so much time, money, and stress during the holidays. Going to the post office instead of using stamps.com is kind of like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. And I don't know about you guys, but I always like to use the elevator. If you spend more than a few minutes a week dealing with mailing and shipping, stamps.com is a lifesaver. You will save so much time and money. Save time and money this holiday season with stamps.com. Sign up with promo code KILLER for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code KILLER. Again, that is just stamps.com, promo code KILLER. Hello, you guys. What is up? Welcome back to another episode of Killer Instinct. If you are new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I am your host of Killer Instinct. If you're listening to me on the podcast, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We post weekly every Wednesday. And if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you do the same thing. We post weekly every Thursday here as well. As you guys can tell by the title of today's episode, today we are talking about the solved case of Hella Crafts. This is a very gruesome case. It is one that I've been requested a lot by you guys in in my email. If you don't know, you can always send in requests to my email. It is just at killerinstinctpodcast at gmail.com. So you can send in some requests there, or you can do so on Instagram. It's just at killerinstinctpodcast. I look at both of those for case recommendations. But with that being said, today's case is a wild one, and I don't want to waste any more time. So let's jump right on into it today. Hella Crafts was born on July 7th, 1947 in Denmark. And in 1969, when Hella was 22 years old, she decided that she wanted to become a flight attendant. She began training in that same year as when she would meet her future husband, a man named Richard Crafts. Richard was a pilot, so you had the whole pilot and flight attendant thing going on for the two of them, and Richard worked for an airline called Eastern Airlines, and when the two of them met, he was also a part-time police officer. Prior to those jobs, Richard had also worked as a marine pilot, so he was a veteran. The two of them dated for a few years before eventually getting married, and they decided after they got married that they wanted to settle down in Newtown, Connecticut. Newtown is a very affluent part of Connecticut, and the two decided it would be a great place to raise a family. Shortly after they moved there, they ended up having three children together. They had two sons and a daughter, and after their children was born, Hella continued to work as a flight attendant. So she continued 
her job and Richard continued with his with being a pilot. Now in 1984, the Kraft family learned very devastating news about Richard and that was that Richard was diagnosed with a late stage of cancer and when he was given this diagnosis, he was also not given a very high survival rate. Now regardless of the odds that were against him, Richard did decide to go into treatment and he did that for a little bit and to his family's surprise and to his doctor's surprise as well, Richard was actually able to beat his cancer and so he was officially in remission. Now after going through such adversity like that in such a traumatic time for a family, you would really think that it would bring the Kraft family closer together. However, that was not the case. By 1985, so just one year following Richard's cancer diagnosis, Hella learned that Richard was having extramarital affairs. Not only did she learn about one affair that he was having, Richard was involved in several affairs during the time that he was married to Hella, and this absolutely crushed her, as you can imagine. She just went through this entire period of thinking that her husband was going to die based off of this cancer diagnosis, and now she felt like she had finally overcome that, and now she has to deal with this whole other element of their marriage, which is now that he has been cheating on her. Now, because of this discovery, Hella decided that she not only was going to meet with a divorce attorney, but she also wanted to get as much information about what Richard was doing behind her back as possible. So because of this, she ended up hiring a private investigator. This private investigator's name was Keith Mayo. And when she hired him, she explained to him the entire situation. And Keith was basically set out to follow Richard and see if he was still, in fact, having those affairs. Now, Keith was able to confirm that Richard was having those affairs because he was able to capture photographs of Richard with other women. There was one in particular where Keith captured a photograph of Richard kissing another woman, and this woman actually also was a flight attendant. And the two were seen together outside of her home in New Jersey. And once Keith presented this information to Hella, this really was her final straw. She knew that there was no saving her marriage at this point, and she was moving forward with getting a divorce from Richard. So in October of 1986, which was just one month after hiring the private investigator, Hella officially filed for divorce and her and her lawyer ended up meeting several times as you do when going through the divorce process to talk about how everything was going to unfold. And when she was in this meeting, Hella made a very concerning remark to her divorce lawyer. And she actually didn't just say this to the divorce lawyer. She also said the exact same comment to Keith. So that is two people that she has told this to. And what she said was that if anything ever happens to me, don't think it was an accident. Hella was very afraid of Richard and what he could have potentially been capable of, as well as how he was going to react when he found out that Hella was going to file for divorce. Hella's friends have come forward and said that Richard had a temper and that Hella was afraid of him. He had very bad anger management problems and Hella was always afraid of what he was capable of doing to her. And Hell definitely had very good reason to be worried about how Richard was going to take this news. And when he did end up hearing it from her, Richard then had to break the news to Hella that his cancer had actually come back. So after she told him that she wanted a divorce, he then told her that this was not the best time to do that because he was again sick. Now, Hella had her suspicions about this claim that Richard was making, so much so that she ended up contacting Richard's doctor and basically asked him point blank if this was true. And that is when Richard's doctor informed Hella that Richard was in perfect health. He was not sick, his cancer did not come back, and this was a blatant lie that he was telling her. So let's talk about November 1986. Now in the middle of November, Hella had to work a flight. She was working a flight that traveled from New York to Frankfurt, Germany, and then back to New York again. And so she ended up getting back to New York on November 18th, 1986, and Hella was picked up from the airport by a family friend of her and then she was dropped off at her house that she shared with Richard and her kids somewhere between 6.30 and 7 p.m. on November 18th. 
Now, the entire family had plans to go over to Richard's sister's house the following morning. The plan was is that the entire family, including Hella, was going to go. However, the following day on November 19th, the plan got shaken up a little bit. Instead of waking up at a reasonable hour, Richard woke the entire house up at 6 a.m. And this included the live-in nanny that they had at the time and rushed everyone into the car to drive them over to his sister's house. Now, Hella was not with them at the time, and when the nanny asked Richard where Hella was, he said that Hella was just going to meet up with them later and not to worry about it. So Richard dropped everyone off at his sister's house, and his sister again asked the same question, where is Hella? Because that was a part of the plan. She was supposed to come with him. However, again, he assured everyone everything was fine. Hella was going to meet them later. However, Richard did not stay at his sister's house. So he basically dropped everyone off and went straight back home. I also want to mention with Richard waking everyone up at 6 a.m., Richard's sister did not live far away. Richard's sister did not live hours away. Richard's sister lived under an hour away. So there was no reason for any of them to have to get up at 6 a.m. Richard's sister lived in Westport, Connecticut, which is not far whatsoever from Newtown. Now, several days had passed after the 19th and still no one had heard from Hella, and no one really got too worried just because Richard was constantly saying that she was fine, everything was good, but people started to get very worried when Hella didn't show up for her flight shift that was scheduled several days later. Hella was not the type of person to just up and leave randomly. That just wasn't her MO. She wouldn't have disappeared randomly without telling anyone, so people started to get very worried, especially Keith Mayo, who was the private investigator who knew that Hella was planning on leaving Richard. He started to grow increasingly worried. Whenever anyone would ask Richard where Hella was, he always threw around random stories. At first, he claimed that Hella was off visiting her mother in Denmark, and then after that story died out, he claimed that she was on vacation with a friend in a different country, but would never name the name of who that friend was. And then ultimately, he just said, that he didn't know where Hella was. Get ready for the ultimate cozy winter night in, brought to you by Beam. Beam is a functional wellness brand that makes CBD products to help you pursue your better and push the boundaries of what's possible. For a limited time only, Beam's best-selling sleep product, which is Dream Powder Hot Cocoa, now comes in delicious white chocolate peppermint. Get ready, swirls of peppermint mixed with creamy white chocolate for a guilt-free hot cocoa of your holiday dreams. It is the perfect winter wind down for those cold snowy nights. It's triple lab tested and contains the ultimate sleep promoting ingredients, nano CBD, reishi, magnesium, and melatonin in no added sugar or artificial sweeteners. Curl up with a cup of white chocolate peppermint dream right before bedtime and get your best sleep Ever. I am someone that has struggled with sleep for a really long time. It always takes me such a long time falling asleep and staying asleep. However, after taking Beam's products, they have helped me tremendously. I've talked to you guys about this before, and their white chocolate peppermint, you guys, is so good. If you know anything about me, you know I love hot chocolate. I love peppermint. I love all of that stuff. So this is literally like my dream come true, and it helped me sleep so much, and I didn't feel foggy the next morning. It was absolutely perfect. White chocolate peppermint dream powder only lasts for a limited time, so get it while it's hot. And great news, if you subscribe now, you can also take advantage of Beam's best sale of the year for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You'll get 40% off the first three months of a peppermint dream subscription, plus a free mug and frother, or 20% off a one-time purchase. Again, this is Beam's biggest offer of the year, and just like this new flavor, it won't last long. Head to beamorganics.com slash killerinstinct that's B-E-A-M organics.com slash K-I-L-L-E-R-I-N-S-T-I-N-C-T for 40% off the first three months of a Peppermint Dream subscription plus a free mug and frother or 20% off a one-time purchase. Pause or cancel anytime. Now, if you have ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there is no better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving Killer Instinct listeners early access to all of their Black Friday deals. 50% off their award-winning home security. We 
love Simply Safe because it is everything you need to make your home safe. I'm talking indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, all monitored around the clock by trained professionals who send help the instant you need it. Now, you guys know that I just moved in to my very first apartment. I live alone, but I made sure the number one thing on my list was security and home security. So I have the essentials kit from Simply Safe. It is their most popular system. It has motion sensors to catch anyone that's walking through my door, plus entry sensors to cover all of my main entry points. And I just love having that extra layer of protection. It's never something I have to worry about with Simply Safe. And Simply Safe was even named the best home security system of 2021 by US News and World Reports. There are no long term contracts or commitments. It's a really easy way to start feeling a bit more peace of mind. Take advantage of Simply Safe's early Black Friday deals and get 50% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash killer. Again, that is simplysafe.com slash killer for 50% off your entire system. Let's talk Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics products are made with clean, high-performance, skin-loving ingredients. Their clinically proven formulas not only highlight your best features, they actually improve your skin over time. All Thrive Cosmetics products are formulated without parabens, sulfates, and phthalates. Thrive Cosmetics never tests on animals. They are actually Leaping Bunny and PETA certified as 100% vegan and cruelty-free, which is amazing. Thrive Cosmetics has a bold mission that's truly bigger than beauty. And for every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help women thrive. For example, they help women emerging from homelessness, women surviving domestic abuse, fighting cancer, and more. Now, some of my favorite Thrive products are the Brilliant Eye Brightener, which is a cream to powder highlighter and eyeshadow stick that brightens and opens the eyes, giving you an instant eye lift. It is your new secret weapon for tricking others into thinking you've gotten a good night sleep. This is a foolproof highlighter that is extremely easy to apply and makes your eyes pop with the perfect wash of color and glow. It is also available in 13 universally flattering shimmering shades. Along with that, let's talk about their overnight sensation brightening sleep mask. This potent skin loving formula melts into your skin to restore moisture and rejuvenate skin so you wake up with a smoother, brighter, and more hydrated complexion. Radiant skin is just a night's sleep away and this cooling and brightening miracle face mask transforms dull, dehydrated skin. Now I love everything about Thrive Cosmetics. Their products are the best I have ever used and their bigger than beauty mission is truly inspiring. You're going to love them as much as I do. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash killer for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here. That's thrive, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash killer for 15% off your first order. Thrivecosmetics.com slash killer killer. Let's talk about Ana Luisa Jewelry. Ana Luisa was founded to bring clarity to the jewelry industry. They design pieces with a more beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible, transparent business practices always, and small batches that are kind to the earth. There are limited batches of Ana Luisa Jewelry ensuring the highest production standard while eliminating excessive waste. Right now, Ana Luisa is running their biggest sale of the year. Their pieces start at $39 and you can get 60% off if you go to shop.analuisa.com slash killer. I personally have the Paisley ring and the Zoe necklace. I absolutely love them. They are perfect for all year round. They are such dainty pieces. And right now that's really my accessory style. I love dainty jewelry and Ana Luisa hits it right out of the park with that. But whatever style you are looking for, they are going to be able to cater to you. They have so many different options to choose from. And again, they are running their biggest sale of the year right now. Pieces start at $39. And right now you can get 60% off if you go to shop.analuisa.com slash killer. Ana Luisa also offers a 365 day warranty and you guys are going to love their pieces. They are timeless, they are classic, and they are going to be something you are never going to want to take off. Again, right now you can go to shop.analuisa.com slash killer. Their pieces start at $39 and they are currently running their biggest sale of the year and you can get 60% off right now. Again, just go to shop.analuisa.com slash killer. That is shop.ana 
L-U-I-S-A.com slash killer, shop.ana.luisa.com slash killer. Now, even though Richard was actively admitting to not knowing where his wife is, there was no urgency ever from him to try and find her. He wasn't filing missing persons reports. He wasn't out actively searching or looking or asking people who have seen her. He was basically sitting back and doing nothing. And once Keith Mayo, the private investigator, got word that Hella was officially missing, he was actually the one that went to the police station to file a missing persons report. However, after explaining to police what had happened and what the situation was and how he's connected into it, police remembered the name Richard Crafts. Because if you remember how I told you in the beginning, Richard was a part-time police officer. So because of that, he did hold some sort of leverage in that department because he was one of them. So police weren't very worried in the very beginning on finding Hella because Richard was one of their own. And at the time, I do want to mention, Richard was not actually a part-time police officer at the time that this all happened. He was a former part-time police officer. So he wasn't even serving at that time. So even though Keith tried relentlessly to get authorities to seriously look into Hella's case, it wasn't until over a month after she had gone missing that a county prosecutor referred this case to the Connecticut State Police. And while this was all happening, Richard was actually on vacation with his children in Florida. He had gone off with his kids. He was off enjoying time with his children away from all of this. And so because of that, it really gave police a little bit of a head start because Richard had no idea that any of this was going on while he was away. So once this case was given to the Connecticut State Police, the first thing that they did was started asking some people who knew the family. And they first went to the nanny of the Kraft family. The nanny of the Kraft family was a woman named Dawn Thomas. And like I said earlier, Dawn was a live-in nanny with the family. So she lived there, she worked there, she was there all the time. And so police thought this was really the perfect person to ask to see what exactly happened on the day of the 19th. And Dawn told authorities that on the day of the 19th, Richard was acting very strange, very chaotic, very abrupt in waking her up and waking the whole family up and making sure that everyone got to his sisters as quickly as possible and then made sure he left as quickly as possible. Dawn said for the first few days, she did ask Richard where Hella was and he told her he didn't know, he wasn't sure. And then after that is when he came up with the story of her going to visit her mother in Denmark. Dawn also remembered that there were big pieces of carpet that went missing from the master bedroom without explanation. And when Dawn asked Richard why there were pieces of carpet missing, he said that there was a kerosene spill in the master bedroom, which resulted in him cutting up the carpet. Dawn also remembered that once she got back from Richard's sister's house, she remembered seeing giant stains in the carpet, but by the time she went to go clean those stains later on, they were already removed. Now, Keith Mayo was one of those private investigators that truthfully went above and beyond always. And when he heard about the carpet that was missing, he ended up going to the landfill to try and find it. And surprisingly, he was able to do so. He found the pieces of carpet and then sent those pieces in for testing to see if there was blood on it. However, there was none. However, regardless of not finding any blood on the carpet, police were able able to search through Richard's home and found that there was a blood stain on the side of the master bedroom bed. And so because of that, a forensic investigation was now in play. Now, once word started to get out about this case, there were multiple witnesses who came forward and said that they saw Richard on November 20th at 3 a.m. on a road next to Lake Zor. Now, remember, Richard's family spent the night at his sister's house on the 19th, so no one would have been at the house to know if he was there or not. Now, Lake Zor is a 72-foot deep lake that runs for 10 miles, and it's only about 15 minutes from where Richard's house was. And this witness claimed that they saw Richard with a U-Haul and what appeared to be a wood chipper in the back of it. By 5 a.m., the truck driver said he drove back on the same road. However, this time, the U-Haul and the man who was presumed to be Richard was no longer there. Once police got a hold of this information, they immediately went to Lake Zor and started a massive search. Now, over the first few days of the search, investigators found pieces of metal as well as several pieces of mail that were addressed to Hella. And these pieces of mail had also been torn 
up. But more than that, police also found human bone remains. They found two human teeth, a fingernail, and 2,000 strands of human blonde hair, as well as several traces of blood. Now, through DNA testing, police were able to confirm that the blood type that was found at Lake Zorb matched the blood type of Hella Craft. Not only that, through dental records, they were also able to conclude that the teeth that were found at Lake Zor also belonged to Hella. Now, with this evidence, it was clear to authorities that they were not going to be finding Hella alive at this point. This was no longer a missing persons investigation. This was now a homicide investigation. Now, we've talked about this before. It is very difficult to prosecute someone in a homicide investigation without having a body. But even though police did not have a body at this point, they still were able to theorize what they believe happened to Hella. Authorities believed that on the night of November 18th, when Hella returned home from Germany, Richard struck her over the head with a blunt object, which is where the stains from the master bedroom come from. Authorities then believe that Richard placed Hella's body inside of a freezer so it could freeze over, and police believe he left her there overnight. And when Richard woke up the next morning and got all of his family in the car and drove them off to his sisters, they believe that Hella was still in that freezer. They then believe that by the time Richard got back, he took Hella's body out of the freezer again, completely dismembered it, and then put the remains in the freezer to freeze over a second time while he then went and cleaned up the rest of the house. After that, it's believed that he took the remains out of the freezer, drove them to Lake Zor, where he put them in a wood chipper and essentially scattered her throughout the entire lake. So basically, the theory is that Richard disposed of his wife by putting her through a wood chipper. And Richard also made a very bizarre comment to Hella's brother, so his own brother-in-law, once he learned that police were searching Lake Zor. Richard looked to his brother-in-law and said, quote, let them dive. There's no body. It's gone, end quote, which is a very, very bizarre statement to say to not only the brother-in-law, but if you don't know anything, saying, let them dive, they're not gonna find anything, it's gone. Why would you ever say that if you don't know what happened? Now, what I also find interesting about this is that Richard purchased the freezer that he placed Hella in days prior to this happening. So it makes me wonder if this was something that Richard had planned while Hella was gone and that he knew he was going to do once she got back. So he purchased the freezer, he rented the wood chipper, he did all of those things just to prepare for this moment or if it was more that he was triggered by something she got home asked him about the divorce brought that topic up and it triggered richard and he just snapped and murdered her now we're probably never going to know the answer to that question however i do find it very bizarre that he purchased a full-blown freezer days before all of this happened now, based on the mountain of evidence, on January 11th, so almost two whole months since Hella went missing, an arrest warrant was made out for Richard Kraft. When police showed up to Richard's house, he actually refused to leave at first. His exact words were, quote unquote, I'm tired. I'll deal with it in the morning. However, police were able to coerce him out of the house and he was taken into custody on bail of $750,000. Now, like I said earlier, convicting someone of murder without having a body is a huge task to accomplish because there has to be so much evidence that this person that is missing is actually dead. So you have to look at all of the evidence. However, here it was very clear to everyone that Hella was no longer missing. Hella, unfortunately, was murdered. The trial began in May of 1988 in New London, Connecticut, and Hella's mother actually took the stand and said that the story that Richard was telling people about how they were together in Denmark, how Hella and her mother were together in Denmark, was not true, and how she hadn't seen Hella in months. Now, even though it basically seemed crystal clear to everyone that Richard was responsible for this, 
the jury did not see it that way. The jury actually was a hung jury in this case. And if you don't know what that means, essentially a jury has to come to a unanimous decision and they have to all agree on a verdict. And if one doesn't, then it can lead to a mistrial or a hung jury in this case, which basically means that they have no verdict. They don't find him guilty, but they don't find him not guilty. And that is exactly what happened here. There was one juror who did not believe that Richard was guilty. So there actually was a second trial. So you had the first trial that was in May of 1988. And then the second one was in November of 1989, November 21st to be exact. After the trial was completed, the jury took eight hours to deliberate before they found Richard Crafts guilty of murder. He was sentenced to 50 years in jail, and Richard has said from the beginning that he was not responsible for this, and in 1993, he actually appealed his conviction, claiming that circumstantial evidence was not enough to prove that he was responsible for this. Now, the Supreme Court ultimately did deny his appeal, and weirdly enough, that same year, Richard actually tried to request access to Hella's estate. However, he was denied that as well. Now, what's crazy is that only 30 years of Richard's sentence was completed, a little over 30, because in 2020, January 29th, 2020 to be exact, so almost two years ago at this point, Richard was released from prison and he was transferred to the Isaiah House, which is a halfway house located in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is a homeless shelter for veterans and Richard is currently in his 80s and is still at the halfway house. Now this kind of transitions us into a larger question, which is should he have been allowed to have been released from prison? Now the argument that I have seen on the side of people saying that he should have been released and releasing him into the halfway house was a good thing is because people are saying it gives him a transition period. It gives him a period to transition from prison to the halfway house to eventually being freed again. Now to me, I will say I find that very ironic that we're giving him the leisure and the cushion of having a transition period. We're trying to help him out a little bit, make him feel a little bit more comfortable. That way we can transition him into the world again and into the country being a free man again. I don't really understand why we're doing that. I don't understand why he's in a halfway house. He's in his 80s. I don't really see the point. And it's not even that he finished his entire sentence and now is at a halfway house. He didn't even finish his sentence. And we're talking about a man that put his wife through a wood chipper. We're not talking about someone who shoplifted one day. We we're talking about someone who beat his wife, froze her for days, and then put her in a wood chipper. I don't really understand why we're giving him a cushion, which typically it's in other countries. We saw it in the Greyhound bus murder case and in the cannibal case that we did a couple months ago where they will either fully release you or they will give you some free time, basically overtime that you can build, whether that's a day or two days or whatever. But I've never seen that happen in the US though. This is the first case I've actually done where I've seen something like this happen. But I am very interested to see what your opinion is on it because I don't really know why we're doing that for him. But that is just my opinion and I can't wait to hear yours. But that, my friends, is the case of Hella Crafts. All right, you guys, that is going to be all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another true crime video here on my YouTube channel. And if you're listening to me on the podcast, thank you for doing that as well. Like I said in the beginning, if you are new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I'm the host of Killer Instinct. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly on the podcast every Wednesday and every Thursday on YouTube. I will be back next week with a brand new video for you guys. And until then, stay safe. Bye guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you join us next week where we dive in to the gruesome and tragic murder of Cassidy Rainwater. It's a wild case and you are not going to want to miss it. So I will see you there.